Hi guys, it's Juliet here. Um, so in my last video, I asked you to vote on which project you wanted me to show you how to make. Either the cherry earrings, the pineapple earrings, or the strawberry earrings. And overwhelmingly, I would say, the vote was for the pineapple earrings. Hurrah! Pineapples are really, really in right now, um, like in fashion and home design and just everywhere. Pineapples are everywhere. And these are really cute. And I'm glad you picked them because they're super fun to make, actually. These ones are kind of a pain. <laughs> they are quite tricky. And um, obviously these are very cute, but um, there's not that much in the beading really. It's just this bit because this is just like a thing on a, uh, a head pin. So, um, but what I am going, well, I'm thinking of doing if there's interest is I'm going to create a PDF download um, tutorial with all three instructions for you. Um, I'm having issues with Etsy right now where it will not let me upload the file to download. Um, so I can't um, sell patterns right now for some weird reason. I don't know. I've, I've emailed um, Etsy support about this. Um, and uh, so I'm probably going to end up creating a page on my website to sell download files. But anyway, um, let me get everything set up with the materials and um, we'll get started. Okay, so the materials you're going to need for this project are, you're going to need some 11 seed beads, um, just round is fine, and I'm using these ones that came from bbcraft.com in this big pack that I, um, I did a video opening. Uh, it's, it, it's a pack of 24. They're not the most... Uh, regular shaped beads but it doesn't really matter because like fruit is organic and pineapples are organic so in a way it kind of works in our favor having um, you know irregular sized sea beads and I love the color of these like I, these are the only yellow beads I have so <laughs> I don't usually use yellow um, you're also going to need and this is also something from bbcraft.com these are wooden beads and they are, um, they, uh, they come in all these different sizes. And actually, all of these are used for all the fruits. So the strawberries, I use the pink ones. I use the medium and the small to make the strawberry. And the cherries um, are these medium red beads right here. So um, I really like these because wood is lightweight um, and also they're, um, I believe these are like from sustainable forests, so uh, kind of nice and environmental as well. So I'm using the biggest of these. Let me just measure that for you and see what the size is. Um, where's my tape? There it is. Okay. Uh, so these are approximately, oopsies, uh, okay, I'm just going to start about, uh, I would say 14 millimeters, I think. Yeah, I would say these are 14 millimeter beads. Um, hard but I, I was eyeballing it and I'd say that's um so you're going to need something um I'm using these little um spacer beads just to because see how big the hole is you need something to stop your head pin from going through so I'm just using that on the end there a little spacer bead um you're going to need two head pins you're going to need um, some earring wires. Oh, the green. I forgot my green. Uh, yeah, you're going to want some accent beads. So whatever you want the spines of the pineapple to be. I'm using galvanized silver. 
Miyuki beads because I like the uh, sparkliness of it in contrast to the more uh, flat colored yellow and also it kind of then ties in my silver um, earring hook and and little um, bottom section you know it all it all looks good together um, I mean I think it would look really pretty with gold as well but um, I'm, I'm doing silver so <laughs> so yeah you're also going to need some green beads just 11 0 rounds again these are Miyuki's, and I'm not sure of the color, I'm afraid, but um, you'll uh, need some fire line. I'm using six pound in crystal, and let's just start, shall we? So we don't need that right now, we don't need that right now. I'm just going to move this stuff kind of out of the way. Okay. So I'm getting some fire line and I'm going to get about um, uh, from my shoulder, my far shoulder to the end of my arm. So about four feet, I would guess, um, or oh, three, maybe three and a half feet, a decent amount. Oh, and you will also need some pliers and round nose pliers for your head pin at the end I mean and your and just to attach on so I just stuck those in there for you but we can move those out of the way okay let me thread my um, needle and yeah these are really fun to make so the stitch that we are going to be using is chenille stitch and the really cool thing about chenille stitch is that it uh, can kind of expand and contract and even if a little bit of thread is showing it doesn't look bad because of the way the um, the beads are placed it um, it ends up uh, kind of covering up for gappiness so um, it's actually a really nice stitch for doing beaded beads um, so this these are actually all pretty much the same from about here all the way to where the green is is the same pattern but you can see how it spreads out more and um, contracts and that's just me uh, sewing around the the bead but you can't really even though you can kind of if you look very closely you can see that there's a little bit more space here than there is say down here but it's all the same stitch so it's actually really a great stitch to use for beaded beads um, okay so let's get started so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find just enough space to weave in a tail at the end so like four inches maybe and we're going to pick up four of our silver beads and push that down um, and then we're going to sew up through the first bead to form a ring like this okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up one of our yellow beads and sew into the next silver bead and we're going to go all the way around. I just need to hold it for a second when I'm pulling through there. Um, just because this is so little at the moment, <laughs> I don't want it to come apart. So you're just going to put one of your yellow beads in between each of your silver beads. And then, okay, so we have this. And then you are going to sew through the yellow bead, step up basically. Okay. So now we have this. So the next thing you're going to do, 
Yeah, and I'm gonna zoom in a teensy bit. Hopefully this is gonna stay in focus. I'm back to using my old setup because I was having problems before drifting too much, but now I'm having problems with focus. <laughs> Oh, I can't win. Okay, let's um, pick up two of our yellow beads, and you're gonna you're coming out this yellow. You're gonna go into the next yellow, and you're gonna add two beads all the way around. In between each yellow bead. Okay, so the last one is to, you have to go into this um, bead that's right here first. That's it. So the bead that's after the silver bead is the bead you're aiming for. Okay, so then you should have something that looks a bit like this. That is a really bad bead. I should not have picked that little tiny bead. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, okay, so now you're going to step up again through the very next bead. Okay. Now, you're going to pick up one of your silver beads and you're going to go through the next yellow bead. You're going to pick up one of your silver beads again and you're going to go through the next yellow bead. Silver bead through the next yellow bead. Silver bead through the next yellow bead. And you're going to go all the way around. Just moving that bead over because it's like, yeah, there we go your next yellow bead. So you're not going into the lower beads, you're only going into the ones that are sort of sticking out. So um, you should be adding eight silver beads on this round. So if you've added more than eight, you're going to know that you've gone wrong somewhere. My bead nuts curling up. Okay, last one. Okay, so here you're going to go in again into the yellow bead at the end, and then you're going to step up through the silver bead. So you should have eight, count them, so there's two, four, six, and eight. Um, I'm going to try turning this light on. Oh, that is not going to help, is it? No, I think we're going to leave that off. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick up two yellow beads again. We're going to go into the next silver bead. And this is really the beginning of our true chenille stitch here. So every time you're adding yellow beads, you're always going to add two. And every time you're adding silver beads, you're going to add one. So you're going to pick up two and you're going to go through the next silver bead. I'm going to go two through the next silver bead. 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 This actually goes pretty fast once you have done one. Um, you'll find that it is pretty simple. Two through the next silver bead and two more. And into the silver bead and then step up through the yellow bead. Okay. So 
there we go. Now, the next step of a chenille stitch is we're going to put a silver bead in between every other yellow bead. Um, so pick up a silver bead and you're going to go through this yellow bead. You're also going to go through the next yellow bead without adding a bead. Can you see what I'm doing there? Let's see if this is gonna focus come on focus there we go yay so I'm going I've, I've picked up a bead and I'm going through that one totally skipping this and I'm going through the next pair like the first of the next pair of two then again I'm going to pick up a silver bead and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing so I'm going to go through The next yellow bead. I'm going to skip the silver bead completely that's here and into the next yellow bead. Okay so we're just adding a silver bead between the pairs of yellow beads but if there's a silver bead here we're not adding a silver bead and your thread is going to jump across that silver bead that's down there so you're just going to go through it, sorry, through the next one, and you're going to skip over that silver bead and go through the next. And if, as you pull, if you start pulling upwards and kind of pushing down with your finger, you'll notice that it will start to curve. So just keep going. And, and just keep your tail like underneath your work there um, out of the way. Oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on. Seems to be a lot of giggling going on. I think my daughter might have had a friend come over or something. I don't know. Anyway. Um, okay. So we're nearly finished here with this round. Last, um, oh no, look, see I'm going wrong. I shouldn't be going into that bead. I should be jumping over. All right, last silver bead. So I'm going to go into the yellow and then I'm going to go into the next and up through the silver bead. So I'm going yellow, jump this, and then step up into the beads that we just added. So step up into the silver beads. Okay, and now, like I said, every time we're adding yellow, we're going to add two. So we're going to add two yellows. And now it's really going to start to curve up, so um, you'll see in a minute. So just keep going for now. Hang on one second for me. Sorry about that. I had to um, tell them to pipe down because they were being a little bit noisy. Okay. Um, so just keep going. Add two all the way around, and you'll see it starts to curve upwards when you pull it. Yep. Can you see how it's cupping for me there? See how it's starting to cup? Okay, so I've got one more to finish this round. Oh, 
which um, so you just pop into that silver one and then step up through the next yellow. Okay. Okay, and when I pull it, it does start to um, form a cup. So just give it a little tug and make sure it um, starts to cup upwards at this point. Now, what I like to do is um, take my bead because what we're gonna do is we want to make sure our tension is correct um, because this is gonna start forming around this bead and working it around the bead lets you know if you're pulling too tight or um, not. If you don't have your bead in place, you may not be able to get your bead in later. So all I do is I literally just hold the bead, whoops, <laughs> and I throw it on the floor. Uh, uh, no, okay, I'll use this one. So all you need to do is just hold it on. And it doesn't matter if the hole is in the wrong place. Um, we're just using it for size right now. Try and get the hole in the right place if you can. Um, so what I, the way I work this is I just, as I'm working around, I just um, hold it like this and then I just turn it and turn it and turn it. Um, so... Uh, so we've just stepped up into a yellow. Can you see that? I'm coming out this yellow. And I was working it this way, but I'm, I've turned it over so that my bead works on the top. Um, so we need to add a silver. Go into the next yellow, skip the silver bead that's down here. Skip this one and go into the next yellow bead. And you're just going to keep doing this all the way around. So you're just going to add a silver in between each of the pairs of yellow beads, just like you did before. And that is literally all there is to chenille stitch, is you just add two beads, and then you add one bead, and then you add two beads, and then you add one bead. So after this round, you're going to step up into your silver bead and you're going to um, uh, add um, two yellows and then you're going to add a round with one silver, two yellows until you, and you're going to work, just keep working that pattern and hold this in place so that you get the sizing correct. And when you're pulling, the tension will be correct to fit around the bead until you get like up to here. So just work your way down and then I will come back and show you. I'm just gonna quickly work some rounds and I'll come back in a minute. Okay, so I actually didn't get enough thread, so I've had to add another thread on. Um, so you'll probably need actually as big as you can get, like your full arm span. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Very annoying. Anyway, I've got a couple more rows to go here, but right now my bead is now sort of in there. As you can see, it's like um, the tension is, is it's not going to come out. So. At this point, we're going to um, put our stopper thing, our spacer on to our head pin, and we're going to poke our head pin through the middle of the four um, silver beads on the bottom, and just make sure that your bead is upright, because if you go any further and you don't have your hole in the right place, you're going to have problems. Um, so just do that and you're just going to hold it um, as you go, just kind of put your finger on the bottom of the bead so that it doesn't all fall out. Um, I mean, it's not a tragedy if it does fall out, but you just want to make sure that the hole is lined up um, because you're getting to a point now where um, 
it's going to start to become a problem. So I'm just going to continue going in my um, in my chenille stitch here, and I'm going to go probably another two rows. So I'm going to do this silver, and then another yellow, and then one more silver. Um, so I'll come back to you when that is done. Okay, I've had to put my light on because it's actually started getting um, dark and so yes, apologies for that. Alright, so you're going to work until you kind of reach the top of your bead, if you hold it sideways, um, and you're going to make sure that you end with a silver um, or whatever you're using for your one um, bead. So just work till there and come out the top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our head pin out and we're going to tie off our ends. Um, so just get a needle. Well, you'll, you'll only have one end, um, but I obviously have two because I had to add another thread. So um, just thread your end. And you can't really tie knots in this. Um, it's it's kind of difficult so all I've been doing is just weaving my tail through the beadwork and it, I mean it, it seems to hold so for instance I'm coming out of this silver bead here so all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go through the that yellow bead and that yellow bead and then the silver bead and I'm just going to kind of go at a diagonal up through all the beads so and just follow this diagonal right here so um, and I wouldn't try and do it all in one go I just work in little sections like I am and then if you want you can turn in a silver bead and then go back down this diagonal here So I'm just kind of going up and down, just weave in enough that it's not going to pull out. It's not, I don't know how it would anyway. Um, and then all you need to do is get your scissors and just um, cut that off. So that's very simple. I will just tie in my other end and then I will come back to show you the next step. Okay, so my ends have been sewn in. And um, and I've still got my thread, my working thread attached, coming out the top of my last round that I did. But what we're going to do while we have this nice open space here is we're going to put our head pin on. And then see how the hole is so big, this wiggles around, right? So the solution I found to that is I pick up a bunch of seed beads onto my head pin and I push them down in there kind of wiggle them get them down and then right at the top I look um, I've got these eight O's that I also got from BB craft um, I suggest you look at the BB craft website and these are all different sizes again they're not very regular but that was actually great when I'm looking for one to fill this hole so what I do is I pick a bead and put it on my head pin and I just see if it will fit into that opening and it does it fits perfectly so see now it's not wiggling at all when I shake it no, no movement so you just want you don't want the beads to come up um, this shaft at all you just want them to be inside the bead and that just stops that wiggling movement um, so that's a little solution that I found for that now this if you're using those smaller wooden beads you don't need the AO you only need um, the seed beads like for my strawberries that I did because um, the holes are slightly smaller okay so that's that um, 
out of the way. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a wrapped loop that our earring finding is going to fit into. And while, like I say, while there's not beadwork here, I'm going to do it. So I take my round nose pliers and I just hold the top and I push that away at about a 45 degree angle. So it's not a 90 degree angle, it's just kind of at a diagonal. Um, then I move my pliers onto the top of the 90 degree angle and I just wrap with my finger that around. You may need to readjust your pliers just to move. And this doesn't have to be beautiful um, because it uh, will not really be seen. And so now my loop is not very good. As you can see, these are quite um, thick head pins, so I'm actually tightening the loop by twisting my round nose downwards. Okay, now I'm going to straighten this bit out and then I'm going to wrap around because what I do not want to happen is for that earring to be able to come unattached from this bead. So I am making a wrap loop. And once around is fine, like I say, it does not have to be beautiful. Mine is certainly not beautiful. Um, then just carefully get your pliers, your uh, wire cutters. Do not make sure you do not cut your working thread at this point. Make sure your working thread is off somewhere else. And you're just going to trim off that little head pin. Okay, so that's our head pin. You can just get rid of that. I have a little recycling metals box that I put all of that into. Um, so we're done with that. Okay, so this will still be able to move up and down a little bit, but don't worry about that. We will sort that out in a second. Um, I've just noticed that this is sticking out a little bit. I don't want it to cut my... Um, thread when I'm working so I'm just going to use my crimping pliers and round that off. You can use like the little rounding if you have rounding sections on your crimping pliers. They're great for like wrapping a coil around I can even get in there. I'm having trouble getting to it. Don't want to pop a bead. No. Hang on. Oops. Hitting everything in my path today. Hmm. like that and then I should be able to just wrap that little end in there we go it's just that I don't want when I get closer into there I don't want my um, thread to be cut by that sharp little end okay we are ready okay so you're coming out you've got your loop ready and in position and you're coming out from a silver bead ready for the next round so instead of picking up two yellows like we normally would we only pick up one and if you're using the bb craft beads um, including the bottom row of silver i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine rows of silver so you can count and see if you have that many if you're not, my advice would be when you get to the top, end on a silver row. Okay, so you're going to pick up a yellow bead, just one instead of two. Normally you'd pick up two at this point, and you're going to just pull in. And it will just start to shape around the top of your wooden bead. See how that's just pulling in now? 
just pulls right on in, starts to form it. And then, got one more, one more. Okay, so then step up through the yellow bead that you just added when you get back to the beginning. Just carry on through the next yellow bead. Give that a pull, see how that's pulled in around it. Now we're going to pick up one green bead and we're going to go into the next yellow bead and then also through the next yellow bead. So just ignore the silver beads for now. So you're gonna go through the next two yellow beads. Okay. And again, pick up a green bead, go through the next two yellow beads. Pick up another green bead, go through the next two yellow beads. One and two. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. And one more. One and I'm not going to be able to make that into just one shot. Two. So you should now have four green beads at the top of your bead like this. Then you're going to go into the next green bead that you just added. And you're going to add one green bead between each green bead. So you're going to pick up a green bead, go through a green bead. Pick up a green bead, go through a green bead. And just make sure that that coil that you made is in the middle there. And make sure your bottom is pushed up so that you don't tighten the beads without getting it into a place that you want it to be. You may have to squish it with your finger um, okay, and then the last green bead. Okay, there. So that is my beaded bead. Now we need to put on the leaves. Okay. So the way I do this is I work the inner beads first because it gets so bushy that um, you kind of can't see what you're doing if you don't do that. So what I'm calling the inner beads are these middle beads that we just added in this round. And these are the outer beads, these four. So you're going to go into the next middle bead. Okay. And you're going to pick up seven of your green beads. Five, six, and seven. So that's seven beads. Okay, and um, push them all down. And then you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna skip the first bead that you pushed down and sew back down through the next two beads. Okay. And then if it's far away like that, you can just put your thumbnail on that top bead and give it a tug and it'll snug up right up to the thing. And then you're going to pick up four green beads, which is the same number we have remaining down to here. And I've come out of this side of the bead, so we're going to kind of make a loop. So if I'm coming out this side, I'm going to go into this side of the same bead that I'm coming out of right, that I started. And when I pull, it's going to make a leaf shape like this, okay? So we basically come out, 
we've added our seven, we've gone down two and added four more and then come through from the other side of that bead, okay? So then you're going to move forward into the next middle bead. So you're going to be skipping this green bead that's here on the corner and you're gonna go into that green bead there. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna pick up seven and uh, go down skip the top one so push it all down skip the top one go down through two okay pick up four And then you're going to find the bead that you're coming out of and you're going to enter that bead from the opposite direction or the other side. And again, you're going to pull and it's gonna make a leaf. And then you're going to skip the next corner bead here, green bead, and go into that middle one. So you're gonna do this two more times and then I'll come back and show you how to do the four outer leaves. Okay, so I'm just adding my last four on my last leaf. So I've got four leaves now on my pineapple, as you can see. And now we're going to add leaves onto these outer um, four. So go ahead and go through the next green bead at the corner of that little square of beads. And you're, this time you're only going to pick up five instead of seven because the leaves on the outside are a little bit shorter as you can see here so you're going to pick up five of your seed beads push them down and do exactly the same thing you're going to skip the first bead and you're going to go into the next two beads Um, and then where you would have picked up four beforehand you're only going to be picking up two this time and then you're going to again find the bead that you're coming out of and enter that bead from the opposite direction okay so there's um that one and then this can this can get a little tricky you've got to Go through the next green bead at the base of this leaf and then over to this um, bead right here. So basically you just kind of have to dig around a little bit to see what you're doing here. Um, if you happen to do the wrong bead or come out of the wrong um, green bead, it doesn't really matter. All we're trying to do is get this bushy um, foliage up here. So go ahead and do the other four and I'll show you how to finish off. Okay, so I'm adding my last two on my last leaf. And there is all of my um, foliage. So we're pretty much done. All you have to do now is just follow the diagonal um, down through the bead again, just like we did before when we were tying off our tail. Um, if you can get through, I would just do like two or three beads at a time, or maybe even one bead at a time. Um, just whatever you can get through. This is really tough, actually. There we go. Ouch, I just stepped myself. Okay, there we go. All right, so you're just gonna work along. Through the diagonal. Just down through your bead until you get to where you think it's probably not going to pull out. You might want to go back up again if you get into a silver bead. OK. 
kind of turn di direction and go up the other way. Um, for a little bit. That's probably pretty good. Okay, I'm going to cut that off there. So there is my little pineapple bead. Very, very cute. And like I say, this chenille stitch is just gorgeous. Like even if you didn't want to make it a pineapple, if you just want to make a beaded bead, I highly recommend this because it does stretch so forgivingly. I mean, if you look close up at this, you can see my threads. But because the um, wooden bead is the same color, you can't really, uh, as my regular beads, and nobody's going to be like looking at it that closely. It, the overall effect is extremely nice. Okay, so when you're finished with that, you're going to grab your earring finding. And you're just going to twist it open. And hook it onto that. You can kind of push your leaves out of the way if you need to. Hook it onto that wire that we put on earlier. And just get in there and close that up. And then you can re-fluff your foliage and you are done. So there's your earring. So, um, that's it really. I hope you have enjoyed this project and you know if you're feeling more adventurous you can try the strawberry. Um, I'm not doing a tutorial for it. I used the small bead and the medium bead and I did a chenille stitch using um, six instead of eight. This has eight silver beads. I put six and um, then I just did a little beaded strawberry leaf Thing at the top so you can try that if you're feeling adventurous um, and yeah so uh, I really appreciate all of you voting um, that was really fun I'd like to do that again um, have a few projects and you decide which one you want so um, I've, anyway I hope you make the pineapples and I hope you really enjoy them and I would love to see you over on Etsy uh, uh, not Etsy on um, Instagram or Facebook. I'm at Jules and Rose. And um, yeah, show me your work. You can tag me if you want. I'd love to see what you make. So um, if you make one of my projects, tag me and I'll, I'll say yay. And I might even share it on my social media. So um, yeah, enjoy your pineapples. And I hope you have a good Memorial Day. And I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.